Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So, today I wanted to dive into something really fun and visually satisfying. We're going to build an interactive particle system from scratch. Think of it like this, cool bursts of color that react right when you click your mouse. And maybe even letting you paint those colors a bit with your mouse movements afterwards. It's a great little project to see how we can connect different parts of Touch Designer. Geometry, particle physics, interactive controls, and even some nice post-processing effects like feedback loops and bloom to really make it pop. It might look complex at first glance, but we'll break it down step by step. It should be a really fun one to build and play with, ready to make some interactive magic. Let's jump right in. All right, let's delete the whole network and start from scratch. Let's also disable the background grid for now. We'll now set up our interactivity. First, add a mouse and chop. Within the mouse and chop, let's capture our left mouse click data by entering a desired name in the designated field. Following this, connect a select chop to isolate the individual channels. In the select chop, specify the channel named left or the name you chose for your left mouse trigger. Next, connect a lag chop after the select chop to smooth the incoming values from the mouse. In the lag chop parameters, increase both lag values to 0.5. Now, connect a math chop from the output of the select chop. And set its multiply parameter to 1000. Follow this with a count chop. After the count chop, add another math chop. And this time, multiply this value by 10. Add a limit chop after this math chop. Set the limit type to loop, and set the minimum value to zero, and the maximum value to 20,000. This configuration will ensure that each left mouse click generates a momentary value of 10,000. Now, connect another select chop directly from the initial mouse in chop to select the TX channel. Duplicate this select chop to select the tie channel. Next, attach a math chop to each of these select chops to remap the incoming mouse values. For the TX channel, which currently ranges from minus one to one, we'll adjust the from range to span from minus 16 by nine up to 16 by nine, based on our intended render ratio. Apply a similar process to the TY channel. Set its from range to minus 0.5 up to 0.5. And set its to range from minus 1 to 1. Let's then add a merge chop to combine these two remap channels. For better organization, conclude this chop network with a null chop. Now, let's proceed to setting up a render network. Begin by creating a geometry comp. Navigate inside this geometry comp by either using your mouse wheel to zoom in or by pressing the I key in your keyboard. Inside of this geo comp, add a sphere SOP. Following the sphere, attach a transform SOP to control its scaling. In the transform SOP, reference its translate X parameter to the null chop located one level above. It seems like there was a slight oversight. Since the null chop we're referencing here is indeed one level above our current geometry comp, we need to write 
forward slash before the null chops name in the expression. Additionally, you can also use the channel index instead of the channel name here, which will yield the same result. Apply the same referencing technique to the translate Y parameter of this transform SOP. And remember to change its index value to 1 to select the second channel from the null chop. Copy and paste this expression to the uniform scale parameter of the transform SOP. However, this time, instead of referencing the null chop, we will specify the lag chop. This will cause the sphere's scale to change dynamically whenever we click the left mouse button. To randomize the point order of the sphere, add a sort SOP and set its sort type to random. Attach a particle SOP after the sort SOP. You can utilize the exact parameter settings as displayed. To determine the number of particles generated, let's reference the limit chop from one level above to the birth parameter of this particle SOP. Consequently, each left mouse click will trigger the generation of 10,000 particles. Let's finalize this geometry setup by adding a null SOP at the end. Don't forget to enable the display and render flags on this null SOP. For the remaining render setup, add a camera comp. And a render top. Now add a point sprite material. Drag this onto the geometry comp and select material. To define the particle colors, add a noise top. To control the seed value of the noise top, we need to make some adjustments to our chop network. From the initial select chop, the one selecting the left mouse click, add a math chop. Within this math chop, set the multiply parameter to 100. Follow this with a count chop. And ensure you reset the count chop. Complete this chop chain by adding a null chop at the end. Reference this final null chop to the seed parameter of the noise top. Now, customize the noise top according to your preference. I recommend setting a very high period value for this noise. For the other parameters, you can either experiment with different values or replicate the exact settings I am using. Set the resolution of the render top to 1024 by 1024 and change the pixel format to 32-bit float RGBA. Next, add a level top to slightly enhance the colors. Add an HSV adjust top to make the colors interactive with our mouse input. Bring in a select chop to select the mouse values we imported earlier and drag and drop the math chop containing the TX value of our cursor into the select chop. Add another math chop to remap these values. Currently, the TX value ranges from approximately minus 16 by nine, up to 16 by nine. We will remap these to range from minus 360 to 360. Reference this remap channel to the hue offset parameter of the HSV adjust top.
Now, drag the final null top to the color map section of the point sprite material. For the post-render part of this project, begin by adding a null top after the render top. We will now construct a simple feedback loop. Additionally, while holding the shift key, import a feedback top, a level top, and a composite top. In the level top, set its opacity to 0.9. Also, Change the composite operation from multiply to add. Drag and drop the composite top onto the feedback top to establish the feedback connection. Add a bloom top after the composite top to introduce a glow effect. To set the background to black, import an RGB key top. Finally, Conclude this interactive project by adding a null top at the very end of our network. Oh, it appears the particles are initially moving upwards instead of descending like fireworks after their burst. This is because the wind parameter in the particle SOP is currently set to a positive integer in the y-axis. We need to change this value to negative 1. Now, it should behave as intended. Also, it seems some particles are remaining at their initial birth positions. This is because we haven't yet linked the composite top to our feedback top. So, let's do that first. With that final adjustment, our interactive particle system is now complete. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you'd like to support my work, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.